Hello everyone, my name is Martin Lee. I'm currently a postdoc working in the field of 2D materials, and I'm working on this series, an introduction to 2D materials as a way to help new researchers in the field get started as efficiently as possible. I am by no means an expert, and I feel that I have a lot to learn still, so I'm using this as an opportunity to get you started and hopefully learn something myself along the way. If there are any misinformation, please let me know and I'll do my best to correct it. Last episode, we explored various exfoliation and transfer methods. In this episode, we will go over one of my favorite topics in condensed matter physics, the charge density wave, CDW, and how they manifest in 2D materials. Charge density wave, or CDW, is a phase of matter associated to a standing wave of electron cloud which results from lattice distortions that occur below its phase transition temperature, TCDW. On the right, you see a scanning tunneling micrograph of the charge density wave state in niobium diselenide. You can see that there are individual atoms arranged in a hexagonal pattern, as well as a large periodicity in the shape of a rhombus. The long range order caused by this lattice distortion results in a reduction of the Berlin zone and an associated band gap to appear at its Fermi level. In a general context, the origin of CDW is not yet completely understood, and since it has the tendency to be a precursor to superconductivity and to compete with superconductivity, it is imperative that we study charge density wave if we want to understand superconductivity to the fullest. This is a list of topics we will cover in this episode. We will start by introducing the history and the derivation of CDW as well as some experimental observations in 1D. Next we will look at the so-called Fermi surface nesting condition and if they hold in 2D. Afterwards we will delve into various experimental methods through which we can identify the CDW states and there are variations of the density waves so we will briefly touch on those. And finally, I will talk about what questions are still unanswered. Charge density wave was first a thought experiment by a German-British theoretical physicist, Sir Rudolf Ernst Peierls. You can see him in this picture right next to Dirac and Pauli. Several sources in literature say that his realization of a single chain of atoms being unstable and resulting in a distortion is said somewhere in his article from 1930. However, this paper is written in German, and I cannot verify if there is a mention of lattice distortion in there. If you happen to speak German, please have a look at this article and let me know if this is indeed true. Several other sources say that his explicit mention of lattice distortions is first reported in his book from 1955. Regardless, the credit goes to Sir Pyrrhus for thinking up this idea. After his first thought experiment in 1955, it took several years till the first report of the experimental observation of charge density waves. On the left is the first report on the observation of charge density wave, to the best of my knowledge. It was first seen in blue molybdenum bronze, where the temperature dependence of the conductivity shows a strong phase transition-like signature. It was initially thought that this was an excitonic insulator, later to be confirmed to be charge density wave. On the right is the first real space observation of a charge density wave state in tantalum disulfide and tantalum diselenide, recorded with a scanning probe microscope. As you can see, the first observations of charge density waves were in 2D materials rather than 1D. But for the sake of theoretical understanding, let's consider the original thought experiment of a 1D chain of atoms. The premise is this, consider a chain of atoms with a half-filled metallic band structure. As you cool down the system, it undergoes a lattice distortion which causes the lattice to adopt a larger lattice parameter of, say, 2A instead of A. Then, due to electron-phonon coupling, 
the electron density adopts a real space periodicity that is larger than the original periodicity. Because of this expansion of the lattice parameter, the Berlin zone shrinks by half, causing a band gap to form at the edge of the new Berlin zone. Therefore, we can define charge density wave as a real space modulation of electronic charge resulting from lattice distortions which cause a metal to insulator transition. The Hamiltonian associated with the charge density wave includes the terms on the energies of the electrons, phonons, and their coupling, with G here being the electron-phonon coupling coefficient. This Hamiltonian is named after Herbert Froelich, who was trying to explain the theory of superconductivity in one dimension a few years before the BCS theory. Using Froelich's Hamiltonian and mean field approach, we can derive the band gap and the modulation periodicity of the electron density in a 1D chain. These derivations are taken from a master's thesis by Halbinger, but I also recommend looking into a textbook called Density Waves in Solids by George Gruner. However, since the assumption used in this derivation doesn't hold for charge density waves in 2D materials, I will just briefly go over the derivation. We start off with the Furlich's Hamiltonian. We apply a so-called Fermi surface nesting condition where we only consider the Q equal to twice the Fermi vector. We will come to this condition later. We also apply the mean field approximation to get this formulation. This can be reorganized by introducing the order parameter delta, which similarly to the delta of superconductivity is the charge density wave band gap. This can now be expressed in a matrix form. Disregarding the phonon term for now, the solution to this matrix can be achieved if we apply the Bogolyubov transformation to diagonalize the matrix, where the alpha and beta is the new basis. After this transformation, we set the off-diagonal terms to zero and solve for the parameters nu and u. Skipping over the math, we get this new Hamiltonian where we can disregard the electrons above the band gap since we start off with a metal at half filling before the transition and a band gap to appear after the transition to the charge density wave state. Now the electronic part of the Hamiltonian is dominated by the electrons at the band gap, which can be assumed to be of this form, where the two comes from the spin degeneracy, and the negative Kc and the Kc define the finite window of momenta near the band gap. Using linear approximation, the energy of the electrons at the highest point of the valence band can be approximated uh, by the Fermi energy minus the linear dispersion offset by the band gap. Ignoring the constant Fermi energy for now, we turn the summation into an integral and introduce d as a bandwidth. Skipping over the math again, we get a total energy of the system in this form. The delta can be written in terms of the bandwidth by taking the derivative with respect to the delta. Delta can be written like so. As you can see, if the electron-phonon coupling increases, then the charge density wave gap also increases. Next, we derive the periodic density wave. We start with rho, the density of charges as a function of position along the chain. The field operator can be written in this new basis as well. Since the upper band does not contribute, we ignore alpha and we only deal with beta. Then Plugging in to the equation for rho and skipping some math, we end up with this expression for the standing wave of charge density. Let's take a break here and end the first part of this episode on introduction to charge density waves. In the next part, we will go over Fermi surface nesting and its failures, and interesting 2D materials which show charge density wave transitions. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.